Hey there, welcome back to my kitchen. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas if you do celebrate. We sure did here and I am so sorry this video is going up a little late. It was just so busy and I didn't have time to finish it, but here we are today and we are going to make some really delicious soup recipes that are perfect for the upcoming cooler weather. I really hope you enjoy today's video and find a recipe that looks good to you. Let's go ahead and get started and I will show you what I made. First up today, we're making a chicken and potato soup. The first thing I did was go ahead and start some bacon over here in my nice big pot. I'm only cooking four half pieces at a time just because they didn't all fit in here long ways. And these were pretty big pieces of bacon, but I did go ahead and cook about six slices total. Now over here to my cutting board, I have one chicken breast. I did go ahead and cut that in half. That way it would be two thinner pieces. And I'm seasoning this with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. There is no amounts here. I'm just making sure it is nice and seasoned. Once the bacon's done, I will just remove that over to a paper towel and go ahead and cook the chicken in this same pot. This way the chicken and the bacon grease get really good flavor going for this soup. The chicken should only take a couple minutes on each side and once it was all the way cooked through I did go ahead and remove it over to a plate. Now into the same pot I'm adding half a cup of diced celery, a fourth a cup of shredded carrots, and one small onion. I'm going to let these cook in here for about 6-7 minutes until they are tender. Now I'm adding in one tablespoon of minced garlic and letting that go for about another minute or so. Next I'm adding in about three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. There still should be a little bit of liquid in the pan from the bacon and the chicken and maybe just a little bit from your veggies as well but that flour will absorb everything. You'll just let that cook in there for about a minute or so. And then once the flour has absorbed all the liquid, I am just going to pour in chicken broth. I like to use a low sodium chicken broth, but you can use regular if you'd like. You just need to add a total of five cups of chicken broth. After getting the chicken broth in here, make sure you scrape the bottom. You wanna pick up all that flavor that the bacon left behind because it is going to add a lot of flavor to the soup in the end. Next, I'm adding in one cup of half and half. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a mix and then we're going to start adding in all of our seasonings. For the seasonings, I'm adding in one teaspoon of parsley, one teaspoon of oregano, just a couple shakes of salt and pepper each. You can always adjust those. A fourth teaspoon of rosemary, a fourth teaspoon of ground mustard, and then after adding all those in, give it another good mix to combine. Next, I'm adding in about a pound to a pound and a half of cubed yellow potatoes. Let that boil and let those potatoes cook and become nice and fork tender for about 10 to 12 minutes. While the potatoes are cooking, I did go ahead and chop up the bacon and the chicken. I'm adding half the bacon in here and all of my chopped up chicken, along with about one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I'm gonna give this a good mix together and let everything just kind of warm through. At that point, the soup is all done and is ready to eat, and this is what it'll look like in the end. This was really, really good. It's a nice little change from just your regular potato soup. You get that extra protein in there, and it is nice and filling. Next up, we are making this wild rice soup, and with this one, I had to kind of improvise a little bit. I could not find wild rice anywhere where I live, so today I decided to use my crock pot for this recipe, and to begin, I just added in two frozen chicken breasts and seasoned them lightly with some salt and pepper. Like I said, I had to improvise with this one a little bit, so we are using this box of rice aroni wild rice. I added the rice in and the seasoning packet, which turned out to be really good in the end, so definitely try this. Then I added in one tablespoon of minced garlic, 
one small chopped onion, half a cup of chopped celery, half a cup of shredded carrots. You can also use more carrots than this, but my husband isn't a big fan, so I tried not to go too heavy. Half a stick of butter, and a total of seven cups of chicken broth. Again, I'm using low sodium, but you can use regular if you prefer. I'm giving that just a quick little mix together and then adding the lid on here. And I'm gonna let this cook on a low heat for about five to six hours until everything is nice and tender and the chicken is cooked all the way through. After the chicken is cooked, I did go ahead and remove it and shred it up with two forks and then added it back in. Next, you'll need to add about eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. And then into this little bowl, I'm just adding in a few spoonfuls of the chicken broth from this soup. I'm also going to add in two tablespoons of cornstarch and get this mixed together and this is going to help this soup thicken up just a little bit. You can skip this step if you want to, but we don't like our soups too runny, so I like to do this just to thicken it up. I poured that in and gave this a really good mix together to incorporate all of those mushrooms and the cornstarch slurry. I covered this again and let this continue to cook for one hour just to let it thicken up and get those mushrooms nice and tender. At this point, I did give it a little bit of a taste and I decided to add some more salt and pepper. This is something that you just need to do on your own, I think. I always say this just because everybody's tastes are different. So just go ahead and give it a little taste and adjust the seasonings to your liking. Here's what the soup looked like in the end. The soup still turned out absolutely delicious, even with using that box rice and the seasoning packet, which honestly, I think that seasoning packet added so much good flavor in here, and the soup still turned out delicious. Last but not least, and probably our favorite of the week, is this gnocchi and ham soup. I went ahead and started chopping up half of a yellow onion, and then I'm also just going to cube up this little ham steak here. You can leave the ham in larger pieces if you want to. I prefer them to be nice and small little pieces, so I just went ahead and cubed those up. Now moving on over to my pot, I'm just adding in about two tablespoons of butter and letting that melt down. Into the melted butter, I'm adding in my onion that I chopped up earlier and about a fourth cup of carrots. I let this cook for about five minutes before adding in the ham. And then I let that cook with the ham for another three to four minutes until the ham had started to brown up a little bit. Next, I'm adding in four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. There should be a little bit of liquid in the bottom of your pan from the butter, a little bit from the veggies, and the ham might create some as well. So that flour is going to absorb all of that and just brown up a little bit. After you notice the flour is getting some color to it, I'm adding in about two to two and a half cups of milk. I'm just gonna add that in slowly, mixing each time. That way it can easily thicken up. Next, I'm adding in one can of chicken broth. Again, this is low sodium. You can use regular if you prefer. If you want this soup to be thinner because this is definitely a thick one, then you can use two cans of chicken broth and that will help to thin up this soup a lot. I let that go ahead and come to a boil. And at that point, I'm adding in one package of regular gnocchi. This will not take very long to cook at all, three, four minutes tops, and your gnocchi should be cooked and nice and tender in there. 
Once they start floating to the top and you have tested them to make sure that a fork can nicely pierce them, go ahead and add in one cup of shredded mild cheddar cheese. Once the cheese has melted, give this a little taste test and see if it needs anything else. I definitely needed some more salt and pepper, so I just added a few shakes of each, gave this another stir, and then it was good to go. This is what my finished bowl looked like in the end. I did just add a little bit more cheese over the top and some parsley for some color. As you can see, this turns out really, really thick, which we both really, really loved. But again, if you want it to be a little bit thinner, go ahead and add an extra can of chicken broth in there and that should really help. This soup was so filling. It is so hearty and perfect for those cold winter days coming up. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm sorry it was uploaded a little bit late, but with Christmas it was just so busy and I did not have enough time to finish it. If you did make it all the way through, go ahead and leave me a flower down in the comments. I love to see those. And I will see you guys back here on Sunday with a new video. Bye!